So what do you know about Matthew Nix? What do I know about Matthew Nix? I know that he's a bit of a ball movement specialist, both uh, defending the opposition ball movement and creating offensive flow. That was his role at the GWS Giants and did a fantastic job with that. He must have because they were one of the best ball movement teams yeah. in the competition. Let's be honest though, we had a lot more to work with up there than what he's got this yeah. year with the Adelaide Crows. But uh, that's the challenge. I think first and foremost, he's there because he's a people person. And this is still a football club that's a little bit broken, if not, if not uh, in desperate need of someone to just draw the group together again. They're taking baby steps under Matthew Nix right now because last year was a tumultuous year. The last, last 18, two years have been tumultuous. We thought it in the grand final in the camp. Um, Don Pike got sacked. Other people got sacked. Brett Burton. Um, you've been at a football club. I suppose you didn't have a lot of change. You always had Dennis Pagan under you. Yeah. And then Dennis left and Dean Laidley pulled up. It, it changes the environment, doesn't it? It does, and they, they needed a fresh start. And what we will see is a lot of youth. I and mean, they're going to play the kids. Yep. And they're going to play the kids in priority positions. Like the centre-half forward's going to be Fogarty. I was going to say, Fogarty's It's not going to be Tex Walker, and Tex may find himself on a wing. Who knows? But wherever these kids need to play will be the priority. And I think some of the senior players that they lost at the end of the year, they were prepared to lose. Yeah, Let, I agree with that. I, I thought the publicity around that, you know, the exodus and the, the bloodletting, I think they had to make those decisions. Uh, I, I'm a bit concerned about Adelaide this year. Um, I wouldn't say concerned. I think they're going to be okay. I don't think they're going to threaten for for the uh, for the finals. I'm looking at Malira signed. I think a five year deal. I'm hoping to see him take some really big steps. Fogarty, we saw a little bit towards the end of last year. He looked really really good, but he's going to get the he's going to have to get the opportunities. And I don't know where Tex Walker is. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know if he's on a wing. There's a game moving that in that drastically in a, in a different direction that we can play. Tex Walker, a centre-half forward on a wing? Maybe. Maybe. He's a beautiful ball user. He's, yeah, he's not he your normal centre-half forward. I think what you will see, we can guarantee there'll be more speed in this forward line. They've got to start to play a bit more of the modern game. You know, that harassing forward line that's not as tall as what they've traditionally been. I mean, they've been a slow forward line. Let, let's be honest. So, when they were at their best, they were harassing, they were, they were scoring from the forward yep. half. Uh, they haven't done that for a couple of years. So, it's, it's a little bit of uh, back to the future for them. I think you'll see Murphy down there, you'll see McAdam, you'll see the young draft picks of the last couple of seasons get opportunity, if not in prime midfield roles, but forward. And I think that's an interesting discussion with what to do with Rory Sloan. Can Rory Sloan do what Dustin Martin does and play centre bounce and then forward? Because he can mark the ball. He's not a bad mark. He, he's, he's, a, um, he's a pretty good body on body marker. I, I'm really looking, I'm not so looking forward to it. There's no one who loves Rory, uh, Rory Sloan as much as me, and I mean that. Um, I think he's dropped away in the last couple of years, and so has his team. I think he's got a big job. He's taken the captaincy himself, and he, he'll take that on. He, he's a very, very proud player, but Rory's in that mix in that midfield of the Crouch brothers, Rory Sloan. I still think they're going to be the core, and that's where it concerns me. I mean, I, I think Brad, I think Brad won the best, he won the best in first last year. Rory Sloan was second. Brad's not a bad player. I'm worried about Matt. Matt Matt's an accumulator, not a damager, and they're a bit one paced. So there's the central core, central part of why I'm concerned about Adelaide this year. Well, we're going to find out whether Brad's a million dollar player or not this year. Let's be honest. I mean, it's easy to put those tags around and the lure of going to another club, but hey, just show us you can do it. Just show us you're not an also ran. You're an, you're an absolute all Australian uh, commodity. And I think that with the improvement Ooh. down back of another intercept. Uh, marker in Tom Duday. Things change for the Adelaide Crows. He just got hurt like, a couple yeah, of weeks ago. I know and I he thought, did, oh no, yeah. come on, they need Tom, don't they? I, I think it changes things. A bit more speed in the forward line, their interceptor back, you know, a bit of pressure on that midfield to actually stand up and some fresh faces. It's exciting. Do you have them in the eight? No, no, I have them a long way from the eight. I reckon I've got them about 14. Mm. Yeah, I'm about the same. I think it'll be. Their wins won't necessarily be four point victories this year. They'll be some growth from those younger players. 